Good morning, everybody. Those of you complaining about no video, I hadn't started yet. Um, my clocks are all different, and even the ones that I get the time off the internet, um, that none of them agree. So I guess I need to figure out what the uh, what's the official clock of the world, the atomic clock. I need a direct link to the atomic clock. Welcome, everyone. I'm glad you're here. And um, it is Wednesday. It is Wednesday, um, September 9th, 2020. And uh, happy that you're all um, joining me for Change the Shed. And it uh, looks like my mic is on. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Um, I have... Uh, it feels like yesterday I was here, but it was two weeks ago. So um, hopefully y'all are doing well. Uh, time is weird. Everything seems weird, but I'm happy to be here with some weaving. I absolutely can't get the light right. So doing the best I can. Sorry, y'all. Um, it's right in my eyes, which is driving me nuts. Um. Maybe this will help. Uh, yeah, good morning. Um, okay, good. I got the thumbs up that everything was going well. So I've been working on um, a few things. This particular little piece is a new tapestry diary piece. Um, yes, this is the one from last week. Um, yes, we have snow. So um, it is uh, weird. It's very weird. We had 100 degree weather last weekend in Colorado on the Front Range in September. It was 100 degrees for two days in a row, which is nuts. I know a lot of you in California think that that's not a big deal, but it's crazy for us. Um, so, uh, yeah, Kate says the camera keeps correcting the color because it can't believe it's orange. I agree. I tried to take pictures of how weird the light has been from our fires. And um, my camera doesn't believe the color that it's supposed to be. None of my cameras do. So we had um, snow then starting. We got that cold front that came up or came down. And... Um, it is snowing right at the moment, so 100 degrees down to like 25. Fun times, fun times. Um, most of it's melting because the ground is so hot that it's as it hits the ground, it, it just melts. But um, it is sticking to the cars and such. So I don't know. We've had like five or six inches or something. So it's good. We have a great big fire here, which is what these tapestries are about. And um, the smoke has been insane. Last weekend, it was this, it was dark. Saturday? What day was it? Monday. Um, so the cold front didn't come until Monday night. Anyway, you guys don't care about all of this, but Monday, it was literally dark. It felt like a complete eclipse. It felt like um, it was 15 minutes from complete darkness all day long really weird. And the light was orange because it was all from smoke. The weather forecast said it was perfectly beautifully beautiful and sunny, um, but it was not. So this is what um, I've been working on. I hope y'all have been working on something yourselves. Um, I will stop, try not to be tempted to talk about our fire, which has been crazy pants. Um, but this weaving is about the fire. So um, this is the one I did before you all saw this one, which I was quite happy with um, on the bottom left that image. And then the top one I, was what I was working on last time, I think. And I really felt like there were some big value problems in that little piece. Um, definitely should have paid more attention to the values. The tree doesn't stand out well from the background. And um, yeah, anyway. I may redo that one, or maybe not, whatever. Um, 
So let me turn that one off. So then, so this, the idea of this was, this was an image that I took um, where this fire is burning right outside of Fort Collins. Um, I took that when we were backpacking um, in early August. And uh, then of course the fire came in a week later and now I'm working on ideas about recovery. So my attempt to cheer myself up is to weave about um, what maybe it will look like in the future. Of course, all the trees are gone, but um, there will be wildflowers. And I hope, I hope that the fire isn't so hot in all of the places that um, it's just, uh, fire can decimate even the soil if it's hot enough. So I'm hoping that there will be areas where we get um, wildflowers and I paid a special attention to the values here <laughs> so that you could see actually this I would I think that a little bit lighter blue behind this hill also would have been better value wise but um, I definitely wanted this to stick out um, so oh good um, Earthquakes in New Jersey, there's fires all over this country. Australia, I've been talking to some of you in Australia, and probably most of you aren't here right now because I hope you're sleeping. It is the middle of the night in Australia. But um, they're already worried about their upcoming fire season. So um, crazy stuff, uh, murder hornets, all the rest. It's it's the weirdest year ever. Um Someone asked, I saw something go by about the um, steamer I use. I use a Jiffy steamer, J-I-F-F-Y. Um, I like it a lot. It's the same one that my teacher had. Um, it's somewhat pricey, and it's not mandatory that you get the very best steamer out there. This isn't the very best steamer, but it is a nice one. Um, you can use a, a less fancy steamer also. It just has to have a wand on it. it your tapestry has to be able to lay flat. Um, Lisa asked that. Uh, okay, Kathleen's asking how I did this, so let's talk about this piece. Um, yeah, Sue says the value problems um, sneak up on you. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> um, and I just, so this, this one, I just, on the top here, I just... It's the same thing we're all tempted to do, right? You just pick the colors you want. Oh, I want green, and I, these greens will look good together. And then um, I usually use my use a black and white photo to look more carefully at uh, value, but I didn't do that on that piece. So anyway, um, this little guy was super, this part was so much fun. Um, this was... Uh, Weaver's Bazaar, so it's 18-2 Weaver's Bazaar, is the green, and the colored bits are, um, I feel like the light's pretty bad, but um, the colored bits are silk, which I get from Mirex, actually. So Claudia, um, who owns Mirex, likes to dye silk, and sh so these are variegated, little skeins of variegated silk. And so the color sort of changes, um, even though there were about five different colors here. There's yellow and purple and red and like this magenta changed into this orange. Um, so the variegation gave me some more options for colors. And so that actually I had a lot of fun doing that. I will probably do that again. Um, it was really fun to move the little colors around for where I wanted the, the suggestion of flowers to be. And then this is just... Um, oh, I see I have some lice in there. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, this is just hatching. So I had, um, I don't have all the colors here, but I was uh, mixing, is this right? Yeah, I was mixing some greens and grays, and this was the darkest green, and then I had a couple lighter ones. And... Um, these are all tapestry diary pieces, and in my mind, I'm sure most of you have heard me talk about this, but tapestry diary for me is about playing and sampling. It's basically a big wall of samples. Leslie wanted to know 
um, what has happened to all of those. And I am actually looking at them. They are up there <laughs> on a wall. I um, used, um, what are those things called? Command strips. I bought big pieces of foam core and used command strips to stick them to the wall. And I have pinned um, those little pieces up on the wall. And I think there's some pictures on my blog, but I'll be probably doing another post soon about that diary. So um, right now they're pinned up. Leslie, my intention is eventually to um, show them in a solo show, um, plus other work, of course, but um, or perhaps in combination with somebody else who's doing this kind of thing just for fun. Um, I did see someone who was um, stitching little tapestries, tiny tapestries into a book. And so that someone else said that, um, oh, Leslie said an album. It would be an interesting thing to do that, to use um, like a homemade book to uh, like stitch them in and have, you know, description of what the, um, what the piece was, why I did it, what I was thinking, uh, sort of like a little diary. Actually, that's a fantastic idea. And I'm going to think about that, Leslie. I really like that. Um, so, so the sky, um, Kathleen and others of you are probably wanting me to talk a little bit about this. So I do this a lot in terms of moving color. I started with, um, so I have these four blues. This is envisioning a future where things grow back. And so I wanted a blue that's deep and beautiful. And um, this is a little excessive for what Colorado skies look like, but I don't care. Um, we'll see if I get there. What I, what I will often do is use hatching. So this is the lightest. And then I'm just slowly, I use two strands of this and then one of each of each of these and then two strands of this one is the one I have here. And then when I want to make it darker, I'll put one strand of this and one strand of this. It's just grading the color. And so right now, oh, it looks like I need to build this up. This is still the lightest color I wanted behind the hill. And Again, value-wise, I think it would have been smart to have an even little bit lighter line right there. If I was going to make this green, gray, that light, it would have been smart to have a little bit lighter blue or darken this up a little bit value, how light or dark stuff is, is super important. Okay. I am, of course, waving from the front. Those of you who've taken some of my classes have seen me also weave from the back. But there was no way I was going to try to do these little flowers weaving from the back. I wanted to see where they were going and what colors were in there. And if I had had all of those floats facing me, it would have been um, a lot harder to make it look right. If I had been weaving this on a pipe loom, like with a fringeless warp, I can turn the pipe loom over and see the other side. In that case, I might well have woven it from the back. But with the Mirax, with this um, thing behind, it's just too hard to see. What you doing? Um, oh, thanks, Kit. Kit's from Durango. She said that the high altitude um, wildflower season, that it's a good expression of that. So thanks, Kit. Um, the set on this piece is 12 ends per inch. And this is two strands of Weaver's Bazaar. And this is 26 cotton seam twine. For warp. Um, 
Yeah, Jean, good good question. What will you do to fix the lice? So I don't know if you guys, I didn't see this until the light got really bright. I don't know if you can see how there's a couple little bits of lice in there. Okay, so fixing. I'm just going to do it right now. I'm just pushing this weft down slightly to cover that. Um, if it's just occasionally, there might just be like I have a float or something and there's just one or two warps that are sticking out, I will take a needle with that color thread and cover it. That is totally fine. So just that little bit of moving the uh, weft down, I, I mean, maybe a half a millimeter. I don't know how much that was, but um, I just needed to be beading a little bit harder when I was weaving this and I wasn't. So in this case, the form, um, you know, it doesn't matter that much. I just squished the form a tiny bit and um, I, that doesn't matter to me, but in other cases that might have been actually a, an issue. If the form, if it was supposed to be a perfect circle and I squished it like that, it wouldn't be anymore. So that isn't a fabulous solution always. Um, okay. Great. Okay. I want to go back here. I missed, um, because I'm doing hatching here. I am mostly weaving it in a line because I'm trying to blend these colors as I go across. And now I want to move the darker bits over. So I'm going to hatch these together. And I'll probably actually, let's do it right now, bring in a darker piece on the other side. Keeping my meet and separate means I'm just putting this tail on the edge. I have definitely put the camera in a bad spot. I'm really sorry you all. It's catching my shoulder and trying to focus. I have not figured out the camera thing very well yet. Okay, so there I just added a little bit of a darker. So it was one strand of this same color and one strand of a darker color. And okay, I'm gonna see if I can get that to stop doing that. Okay. Ah! Okay. Hopefully that stays. Let me know if it's, if I don't notice that it's not working. Yeah, Michelle is talking about the um, uh, the Damascus um, tapestry lectures are really fabulous, y'all. If you haven't picked up on those, they've all been really great. Um, Molly Elkine did one last week about mounting small tapestries, and it was fantastic. There's a couple of things that I've never tried that she was talking about that I definitely want to try. So, uh, Marsha asked, this is, I just double my salvages, um, Marsha. This is not a floating salvage. It's nothing special. It's just there's two warps on the salvage. This warp is actually fairly thin and doubling. I tend to use thinner warps than other people and doubling the salvage makes that salvage really nice and firm. <laughs> Thanks Kate for the 
shot in the arm there about the technology. It's uh, not always easy to. The hardest thing about making online classes, one of the hardest things is getting the camera clear. And um, have you ever tried to weave while you have a camera in front of your chest? It is really hard. Um, and so like I just shot some videos that some of you will see soon um, where I had to weave like this. I'm over to the side and I'm beating like this. So of course that's a bad example of how you should beat also, but um, just trying to figure out the angle of things is quite difficult. Sometimes I'll use B-roll just because then I can get a clearer shot. Sometimes B-roll is just extra video you put over the other video. Um, so sometimes it means uh, shooting something two or maybe three times. The finished size of this piece, um, Kathleen, is um, about three inches square. Although I drew this, here's my little cartoon. Um, I actually was going to add clouds in here and I was working on that yesterday and I hated it and I took it out. Um, I might actually make this taller because um, just the feeling of where, how much sky there is depends on what I see. Three inches square would be the same size as the other ones, um, but I don't know yet. So someone asked how I did this flower thing. Um, basically it's demi -dwees. So I'm just running two threads at the same time. So I would have a green and a piece of silk and I would pull the green to the front when I want it to show and the silk to the front when I want it to show and the opposite. It's like if you're a knitter and you do stranded knitting, it's exactly like that. Um, color work knitting where you pull the strand to the front that you want and on the back there's a ton of floats. So there were quite a few colors going at once so the floats on the back of this are pretty nuts. It's fun. It's a fun way to move color around. It definitely makes a mess and you have to be careful to keep the tension right, just like if you're a stranded knitter, it can be hard to keep the tension good so it doesn't look, so it, I mean, I wanted it to look nice and flat like it, like it does. Um, it's easy to get little blips of color. Okay, what am I doing here? I did use eccentric weaving. Michelle asked if there was um, an eccentric outline. Uh, there is one here with split weft and there is one here, same thing, eccentric outline and split weft. That's something I talk about in the warp and weft class, I think. That might be the only class I talk about that. Um, someone asked earlier what class to take after the three-part warp and weft and when I was designing classes, um, the next one in line was the color gradation class, which is another technique class. It's not a, though the word color is in the title, there's not a lot about color theory in that class. It is a technique class. It's just a more advanced technique class than the warp and weft. And then, um, but since then I have also done the fringeless class with Sarah Sweat. So if you're interested in that, um, that is so fun. Sarah is such a great teacher. I still love that class a lot. So that's a good one to take or um, the design class. And if you have more questions, you can email me about that. Yeah, sure, Lynn. Hopefully that made sense with the flowers, how I did the back and forth. It's a fun thing to play with. Um, I will actually do a video about it for the, um, as I'm working on upgrading the Warp and Weft class. Um, I'll do a video at some point showing that exactly that goes with the demi dewey stuff. But um, have a 
haven't done it yet. I am splicing these um, Weaver's Bazaar wool yarns. I will say that I no longer cut them off flush on the back though because these 18-2 um, yarns are pretty slippery. I don't know how Weaver's Bazaar gets these yarns to have so much reflectance. They're really shiny. Uh, they're beautiful and I, I don't know how they make them because this is wool to be so beautifully reflective, but they're also quite slippery. So if you cut them off on the back, that is a weird optical illusion right there. I feel like this where I added this blue is sticking out. Um, and I don't think it is. I think it's just that there was a dark part in the yarn right there. It's all right. Um, and there's nothing wrong with floats, Michelle. Just because I'm a weirdo who likes really flat, clean backs, that has a lot to do with the bigger tapestries, why I weave that way. I let go of a lot of my personal rules when it comes to these small things, which is fine. You have to do whatever you need to do to express what you want to express. And that is different for every person. So just because I do something one way doesn't mean that you should follow suit. Um, good. I'm glad the camera's better. Thank you. I will try to remember to do that from now on so it doesn't keep changing the, um, yeah, changing the thing. That's, I'm sure that's true, Mary Lou, that it has to do with the type of fleece. So I'll have to ask um, Lynn from Weaver's Bazaar about um, if there's like spell sow or some sort of long staple fleece that they're using for this yarn, it's made, I think it's made in Europe somewhere. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is, um, I want to drop out this lightest color. So, um, this is the same color as this. So I'm actually going to drop out both of these and this one can fill in all the way to the edge. Um, and then I'll have two colors here, but then I will add this color over here at some point soon. That might not be interesting to you. That's how my brain works in terms of, um, if this were a large tapestry, I would definitely do this because I want to splice these and I, with my fuzzy yarn that I use on the large tapestries, um, it grabs really well. And so I would splice like this and then I would cut the splices off later off the loom. Well, I actually cut the splices on the loom because I'm weaving from the back and I can see them all and so I often will just cut them off after weaving a little on top. Oh yeah, Kathleen, no, definitely. Kathleen asked about the design class. I am definitely doing a season two of the design class. Um, I'm working on it right now and it will be opening in January. So yeah, that's a definite. Well, I guess you never know these days. 2020 has been a crazy, crazy thing, but my current plans, I should say, include opening a second season of the design class in January, 2021. <clears throat> that's the class that has the most about color theory. So if you're interested in color theory and how it relates to tapestry, that class has the most about that. <clears throat> I have somehow talked my way all the way to 11 o'clock already. So this, is this this? Yeah. So now I want to mix this one and the darker one. Let's see how that looks. Look how big a value difference there is right there. Um, I'm not sure if there's an intermediate blue here. I don't. Uh, if there is, I didn't find it. But let's just look at it and see what it looks like. Okay. 
And then on this other side, this is these two. And I'm going to add this same color over here, which is two of these. Christine asked, do we need to do season one to do season two? Um, you don't have to. I won't be repeating stuff though. So if you have lots of questions about color theory and I talked about, you know, a certain subset of color theory in the first season, I'm not going to talk about it again. Um, but there's no requirement that you have to take the first season. A lot of the stuff stands alone. It's mostly the color theory and some of the design lectures that don't necessarily stand alone. But you don't have to take. You don't necessarily have to take season one first. I would recommend it, but. Thanks, Barbara. I am pleased at how this is turning out. I'm, I'm a little, I still think there's a value problem right here, but um, it's better than the last one I did. So that's good. I'm learning something. Um, cool. So I, I can't give you a definite date for the next Change the Shed. It might be next Wednesday or it might be the week after. I will let you know. I am, that is pretty dark. I am hoping to go backpacking one more time and I'm going to have to go north to do that and the weather's looking a little bit cold but we shall see what the weather looks like i will let you know about next week or the week after one of the two i will be here maybe both but probably not both gosh I think that blue might be okay if I hatch this next time all the way over here and try to um, blend it in a little bit slower. It might be all right. I also might go look and see if I can find an intermediate blue between these two. If this were a set where I had more strands of yarn going at once, this would probably work fine. Um, because I could have, you know, if I had four or six strands of yarn, then the blending would be more gradual. But with only two strands, it does show up when you jump values that quickly. Let's see, what am I doing? This. <laughs> no dot. You know, I have dyed. That's actually not out of the question, I have dyed Weaver's Bazaar and I do have a whole cone of white um, still, but I doubt I will dye any of this. This is a tapestry dyer piece and so my investment in having that color be perfect is pretty low. Also working within limitations is important. It's a good lesson. Okay, let's just try this one thing and then you can watch my blog or Instagram. I put these on Instagram a lot. Um, if you're curious what I decided, I'm just going to look at this one first. Also trying hard not to make the not to let this expand in width. might like it. I don't know. I'll let you know later. I need to fill this in before I can go back, but I think it might be all right. 
Um, yeah, Sheila. Sheila asked um, if there's a possibility of a die class. That is the other thing I'm working on this fall. So my goal, uh, I'm not going to commit <laughs> to an exact release, but if um, Robbie were here, she would uh, keep me to it. Um, my goal is by the end of this year to have the die class up and ready. I have already shot some of the video for the die class, so that would be acid wool dyeing is what um, Sheila was asking about, I think. So that is coming. Fingers crossed on that one, because of course every new class is a lot of work, so, but it's fun. I hope that you all are doing well, um, that you're weaving. I think that we all have some challenges <laughs> that sometimes feel kind of large and sometimes I don't know about you guys but some days just feel like wow it's a lot so yes the book date is still it's actually October 27 so I am waiting to get that book on my doorstep I don't know when it's going to show up but um, one of these days soon I will get a copy on my doorstep and that will be awesome. But yes, October 27 is when the book releases. Thank you to all of you who have ordered it. Um, Pre-orders are super helpful. So if you haven't and you think you want to get a copy, it would be awesome if you would pre-order it. But you have until October 26, I think, um, to do that. And of course, you know, I'm not pressuring you to pre-order. You can also get it from your guild or a library or whatever. Um, yeah, so thanks you guys. Um, fun to check in again. I will um, definitely put up on my, on that Change the Shed page, which is right here. If you go to that page on my website, I will um, put when I will be back. I will be back either next week or the week after, so. Hopefully I will have more to show you on um, a few other things I'm working on. So, um, yeah, everybody stay safe. There are, uh, we're not in any danger in Fort Collins. Um, there are a lot of people just up the mountain who have been evacuated, but um, I don't think we're in any danger in this city. Um, but there are a lot of people in California, especially who are, so hope that you all stay safe and if they tell you to evacuate please evacuate immediately um <laughs> you're welcome cheryl she said thanks for the therapy session and hope i'm trying trying to keep it together um some days are better than others so you all are super helpful to um keep me on track it's it's fun to be able to talk with you in real time i am <clears throat> excuse me now rambling so I will let you know when I'll be back and um, have a really great day. Go weave something or do something else for you at some point today. And those of you who are working hard, thank you for working hard. Uh, all right. I'll catch you all soon.